Hi, I'm Marie Carr with PwC, and I'm here with my colleagues, Jamie Yoder and Anand Rao, and we've been talking about beyond insurance 2020 and some of the factors that are really causing disruption. There's no bigger factor than when you start talking about information advantage and, and technology and the like. And if we look at information, there are three things that you've talked about in spades, and that's digitization, insight generation, and then the whole thing around decisions and actions. You know, let's start off with digitization. I mean, that's something that's a term that's used everywhere all the time. It means a number of different things to a number of different people. For me, it's, you know, at the point of interaction, being able to use technology and turn that into data. But Jamie, what really is digitization? Yeah, so uh, no, I think uh, to your point, I mean, I, nowhere has there been more more change and, and innovation and, and the use of technology to really change how we capture, consume, interpret, and use information. And you know, in the insurance industry, right, we're, we're very in information intensive, uh, if not an information business altogether. And I think what's really interesting about it, so digitization, this loaded word, it's, it, it's changing the way we think of the interaction models with our customers, among customers, with our, with our channel partners, and with third parties, and, and among our employees. Uh, but it's also really integra integrating with the assets that we insure. So, you know, whether that's in, you know, autonomous vehicles and what's changing there, the connected home, uh, we see it in the machines, so in the ma manufacturing, the energy space, uh, with sensors, you know, like the ability to, to play a part and understand what's happening there, um, and even amongst, you know, sort of the connected self uh, and, and the connected devices for our bodies, but also fundamentally embedded within our operations, right? So whether it's in changing underwriting, revolving claims and the flow of that information across our companies. And, you know, it's interesting is, is uh, you know, in our, in our 2015 CEO survey, CEOs were asked, they see 60% see, you know, significant opportunities due to this change in technology. Same percent see, 60% see, see as threats, that the speed of technological change as a great threat uh, to, what, to what they're trying to do. And so much that centers around uh, really unlocking your own technology as well as well as those emerging technologies that one could consider. Mm -hmm. And when you start thinking about digitization and when you were talking about the connected home, connected self, I mean, to me, it seems like you're changing the very nature of risk and what's being protected. I mean, how do you see that? Yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, this really gets into when we talk about how you generate the insights and what does that mean and around thinking about risks, uh, you know, I'll turn that to an, to an end to, to talk about, but this is a real shift from this sort of diagnostic and, uh, you know, more descriptive to, you know, predictive, which we already see emerging. How do you generate the insights? Yeah. How do you make so that So, as you said, I mean, if you start from the digitization in order to go to the insight generation, we are generating tons and tons of data, and there's a lot written about it, right? So, exabytes of uh, data, and no one even understands what exa stands for, but there's still <laughs> exabytes of data. It's <laughs> big, <laughs> because that's all we, we know, right? So, there's so much of data. Just to give an example, you talked about co a connected self and assets. Uh, we just have, what, three and a half billion people on the internet today, and that's just three and a half, compared to 50 billion devices. Now, all of that devices are going to be emitting some form of data, not just once in a while, almost every second. So what do you do with all of that data, right? So obviously we know it's tons and tons of data. So in order to get anything out of it, we need to understand what that data is. And most of the time, it's useless data. We are interested only when there is some change. So that's why the insight generation comes in. How do we take in all of this data and then make sense out of it? And so far, uh, you mentioned the descriptive uh, analytics and the prescriptive analytics. What we have all been very comfortable about is limited amount of data we can churn through, uh, come up with reports, come up with dashboards for executives, which has all been very backward looking, which is all very useful. So we need to understand where we came from. So that's all been happening. So now what we are seeing is a big shift towards not only seeing a descriptive analytics, but then going more into why it happened, right? So that's what we call as diagnostic analytics. So trying to look at where was that change that happened. If it is a car, then where did the car veer towards the left or the right, right? So what action did a customer take which 
bit to go it from the uh, out of the average. So those are kind of changes. Now we are moving further into predictive analytics. So people have started using it, underwriting, trying to understand customer, customer risk better. And now we can get into the really the detailed at a personal level, uh, your particular health profile, uh, your social profile, everything at a personalized level. And that sort of changes how we view and target people and uh, underwrite uh, uh, insurance or underwrite the risk. And now we are moving even further beyond into what we call as prescriptive analytics, where the decisions, uh, the insights are not just taken by humans for human consumption, the machine might take those decisions on its own. Just to give an example, I know we have all had cars and uh, uh, a few years back, we will just show the speed of the car, and of course you are 40 miles an hour, you bang at the, another car behind you, tough luck, right? So it's an auto insurance claim. Now, you can show that, and descriptive would basically be flashing a red light saying, hey, you're at a much higher uh, speed. Now, prescriptive is essentially stop you from doing it. So the, the brakes will come on automatically without your control. And that's what we are seeing in almost in every area, this notion of prescriptive analytics. That whole intervention, and so you're taking the notion of risk and you're so dramatically shifting it from just the claim that you talked about to actually being, to, being able to influence behavior and influence outcomes, which changes pricing, which changes the nature of your interaction. You go from just ensuring a risk to actually being more, from what I'm hearing, more consultative and advisory in what's going on. There are actually two kinds of things that are happening in the insurance industry with respect to that risk. One is understanding that risk better of existing products, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's auto insurance, life insurance, or commercial insurance, just getting a better handle on that insurance with respect to the specific company or specific individual. Of course, that's where uh, we try and understand what the behavior of the individual consumers are or companies are, and we can come up with products as insurance companies which changes the behavior, changes the behavior for the good of the company or the person, as well as better from an insurance point of view in terms of lowering the claims costs and reducing the losses. Mm -hmm.